Hey everyone, I'm really happy to announce that I've just finished and released my latest Geometry Nodes generator, Decalify. To summarize it, it essentially creates a decal out of any mesh object. So for example, we have a 3D mesh here, and I want to turn this into a decal. So first I've appended my Geometry Nodes, or you can add it to an asset library. So my nodes are already in the scene. We can search for Decalify, assign the modifier, and that makes it perfectly flat, which is not what we want. We want to have a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, parallax here. So if I change this to 0 0.05, it gives it a tiny amount of parallax. All right. So we can then set the target mesh. And I'm just going to snap this to the surface now using our snapping tools face and align rotation to target. And I'm going to give this a few extra subdivisions, let's say two for now. We can then enable shrink wrap, and that will snap it to the surface. And we can increase the offset ever so slightly, just so we don't get any crashing. And I'm just going to increase this slightly more. So now we have a decal, which is on the surface. What we can then do is shrink wrap the border. And what that will do is snap the border. So if I offset this quite a bit, shrink wrap the border, you can see the border is hugging the surface just so we can eliminate that gap if needed. It's not 100% necessary for a lot of baking, but it's nice to have. So we'll shrink wrap that border. And then lastly, what we can do is we can, well, a couple more things. We can transfer the UVs. So I'll just turn off overlays for now. We can, sorry, blend the normals. So if we can tick that on and off, and you can see that we get this nice seamless transition. This is a flat decal on the surface and it looks 3D because we've projected the normals from the 3D mesh onto the 2D version of it. Perfect. Another thing to mention is that we have this border edge mask setting here. So by default, in the kit that is provided, we have a decalify vertex group on it. And all this is, is if I just disable the modifier, enable overlays, it's a vertex group around the border here. I'll enable that back. And the other option is auto detect. So if you have a simple decal, with a single open edge around the outside. This one has lots of open edges, so it won't work, but if you just have a very simple decal, you can use auto detect and it will find the border edges automatically, so you don't need to use a vertex group. Um, cool. Uh, so we can also transfer our UVs. So if I go into textured mode, we'll just go into material, sorry, texture and studio, you can see that as I drag my decal around, the UVs are being dynamically projected onto the decal. And what this means is that you can shade and texture objects using these decals without any seams or issues between the transition of the target mesh and the decal, which is extremely useful, especially when you want to stay in Blender. Let's just go back to our map cap here. Uh, Another important setting to mention is the deform accuracy. So if I just come to this side view here and I turn this down to something like four, you can see that we're getting very sharp transitions here. So what this setting is doing is it draws a grid around our decal and this grid is then projected onto the target mesh surface. So with a setting of four, we have that much division in our grid. But when we increase that value, this gets more dense and having more points gives more accuracy to the snapping onto the target mesh surface. So that's way too low, something like 24, 32. Those are some good settings to use. Cool, let's just start propagating some more decals just to show you how fast and quick it is to start adding details. There's no prep, no fuss, just put them on the surface, and we can just control L, copy modifier. I've got a little decal here, 
we can just rotate it around as we need. Let's screw this guy here. Oh, I've already got that guy. Let's move this guy onto the surface. And another setting I want to go over is the uh, projection method. So if I make this really large, wrong one, make this very big, and we'll just rotate that around, something like that. And let's just copy the modifier. And right away, that looks great, but we'll just go over exactly what is happening here. So we have two methods, nearest surface and raycast. And you'll see that things change a little bit. And I'm gonna give this a bit more of a subdivision because it's quite a long span and we need to have enough divisions to, con to uh, conform to that curvature there. So if you do have any faceting issues, change the deform accuracy or the sub D level. So let's break down what's happening here. If you have Raycast selected, it will project down the Z axis for the entire decal. Whereas nearest surface, what that's gonna do is it's gonna find the nearest surface and try and conform its best to that surface. So it won't project straight down. So if we visualize that for a second. So this is Raycast and that's going directly down. And this is nearest surface. So you can see that it tries to conform to that curvature a bit nicer. Something else I really think it's important to touch on is that this is more than a decal uh, modifier. This also is mu uh, multifunctional in the sense that we can create decals, but we can also use this as a general surface deformer. So if I copy this modifier, you can see we've got our little uh, decal here. Might need to increase the the depth to get rid of those artifacts. But let's just say I don't want to make a decal. I just want to deform this onto the surface. Well, I can change the the depth or scale to one. And you can see we have our original mesh back. It has its 3D um, depth from the original one, which is really useful because it means I can snap any object onto any other object and ensure that it conforms to that surface. Last subject I want to touch on is optimization. So right now we're conforming onto curvature, which is pretty intensive, not to mention we're also transferring UVs and target normal. So if you're doing decals on a flat surface, a lot of these settings are not needed and you can actually get a lot of speed boost in your scene. So let's just create a cube. And we can just, we can duplicate this guy here. We'll just change that to target mesh to this one. Let's just disable it so we know what's happening here. So we got guy here okay so we have our little decal which is being projected and we should also probably match the material so we have a nice little decal but again this is a flat surface so we don't need to shrink wrap so we can turn off shrink wrap we can probably also turn off shrink wrap border I mean it's up to you but in this case we'll just turn it off so it's not going to be very noticeable. And let's see, what else can we turn off? We can turn off blend target normals, and we can also turn off transfer UVs. And you can see now it is like very fast to move this around. So if you're working on a flat surface, turn these off just to keep things fast. And with optimization in mind, it's also important to note that with all of these decals, you should probably keep them on their own layer or collection or group. And when you're making changes to the target mesh, probably disable them, you know, do your extrusions as you would and re-enable them. And the reason for that is because this is all live. It's evaluating the normals, the UVs live. So it's important that you turn them off. So for example, when I extrude now, it's much slower. 
Just something to keep in mind. Last but not least, let's discuss the decal kit provided in the secondary price variant. So you can purchase the modifier or the modifier with the kit on my Gumroad and Superhive. This kit has been really well put together. It's all quad sub D to clean topology. Um, and the reason why it's sub D is so you can subdivide this as many times as needed to conform to a particular curvature of a surface. It's all quad based, very clean and extremely high quality. It's also been organized into a Blender asset library. So you can just drag and drop any decal into your scene very easily. And that pretty much summarizes Decalify and the kit that's included. If you feel like this tool could save you some time, if you see the value in this tool, then you can pick it up on my Blender Market, well, Superhive or my Gumroad. I'll also be releasing a video in the near future breaking down the entire process of creating this modifier, so stay tuned.